First of all, I am so sorry that this is happening again. That sponsored walk, training day, battlefields, and now I'm ill. And so we're missing another Friday lesson. However, I don't want you to miss out entirely on being taught by me, so this is just a quick video to uh, lay out some of the opposition to Roosevelt, which you might remember from your GCSEs. And it kind of falls into two camps. The people who thought he didn't go far enough to help those who were struggling as a result of the Great Depression. And those people, chiefly in the Supreme Court, but also among some business leaders, who thought he went too far with some of the measures that he put in place to try to deal with the Great Depression. In the cases of the people who thought he didn't go far enough, well, you've got a, a priest who you'll, you'll read about, but he discredited himself by becoming very anti-Semitic in his views. You've got a politician, Huey Long, who was actually, one month after he announced he was going to run for president, was shot. And if he'd run for president, it might have been like some of the elections you've learnt in Year 12 about, where it draws support away from from Roosevelt so that the other party managed to steal in and, and, and win the election. So that that was a bit of a threat, but he got, he got shot. And there's other things from people who thought he could have gone a bit further. The Supreme Court, though, certainly in the earlier years, they thought that Roosevelt was going too far with some of his measures. And the sick chicken case, which is actually a pretty cool name for any case that we have to learn about, the sick chicken case is the the key one which really put a scupper on one of Roosevelt's key plans. One of his main plans was the NRA. You, know, you accept the codes, you can display the label. And this this particular company, which I believe was operating out of New York, or just, yeah, um, were selling substandard chickens. And uh, so the federal government tried to prosecute them. But the Supreme Court ruled that the federal government had no right to prosecute that particular company because it was only operating within one state. Whereas the federal government is supposed to uh, govern trade between states. Because this was a singular case of one state and a company that only sold in one state, it was decided that the government had no right. And this kind of sparked the end of the NRA. It wasn't the only thing, and you'll read about those today. Um, but Roosevelt tried to do something about the Supreme Court blocking his plans. One of the things that he tried to do was he threatened to pack the Supreme Court. He proposed that there should be more Supreme Court judges, uh, and if they got to the age of 70 and hadn't already announced their retirement, then they should be able to be forced to retire. Um, and what he wanted in there, effectively was some Supreme Court judges that agreed with him, rather than the ones that were there at the time, who definitely didn't. I think, or I'll just check, uh, I think it was to increase the number from 9 to 15. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Yep, so it was from 9 to 15. Um, now, this never actually got through Congress. It was really, really easily defeated um, because people respected the Supreme Court and they respected that branch of the government. It was going to be very difficult to change. But afterwards, the Supreme Court was a little bit more willing to give Roosevelt what he wanted. Whether that's because Roosevelt's demands were a bit less extreme or because the Supreme Court was worried that what Roosevelt would do to try to take them on, well, we, we, we don't know. And there's another group, as I mentioned who tried to take Roosevelt on a little bit. I was certainly unhappy, um, and those were big businessmen, because um, he was demanding higher taxes, and that affects big business, and it affects their profits. So they, they were annoyed specifically at the Revenue Act, which raised taxes. Um, and it was also seen, I mean, all of this was seen as government interference, and there, were, there is an argument, well, amongst historians as well as amongst people at the time, that maybe Roosevelt's regulation of the economy made the Great Depression go on for longer than it needed to. Um, but Roosevelt would argue that it needed regulation because look what had already happened. So there's a little bit of an introduction into what you've got to do. It's uh, 
make a mind map. I've put some coloured paper because we know you like that in the bottom drawer in, in H7 so you can use it. Um, and then if you look on page 186, there's a working together thing where it says this class believes that the Supreme Court posed the greatest threat to the New Deal. If you finish making a mind map with that top information, then you could answer the question. Uh, the Supreme Court posed the greatest threat to the New Deal. How far do you agree? And pop that on your mind map as well. Um, on Wednesday, I will have brought my interpretation answer. You need to bring yours. Full details on show my homework. Obviously, we're not doing the quiz today because, well, look at me. Um, but we will be doing, well, I'll choose four or five of those 16, first 16 questions on the A-star sheet. If you weren't here last lesson, they're all on show my homework. Or you could just borrow someone else's and photocopy it. It's, uh, it doesn't matter. Right then, I'm going to sleep.